no buzz at Just Bees Book Club. Um, this morning, we got The Diving Pool. Uh, three novellas by Yoko Ogawa. This is, uh, as you can see here, we got a little, we got a little, we have ourselves a little library copy. Um, it's been a while since I went to the library and I saw this and I was like, dang, I really liked Memory Police. I read that mm, last year, maybe two years ago at this point. I think it, I think it was 2020 actually when I read the, uh, the Memory Police. Um, quite, quite good. Um, really um, evocative, great use of spare language, and, um, and an interesting premise. Um, it's about a, a young novelist who, oh hey, the sun's coming up, um, who lives on this island where there's these things, this institution called the Memory Police, who will just occasionally be like, and today there is no longer such thing as butterflies, and all butterflies are gone, uh, materially and, and um, um, sort of semantically and and uh, just you know conceptually i guess um and it's about sort of her attempts to do her thing to live among you know li live life with this fisherman and shit um who she like hangs out with occasionally and and uh and deal with this sort of metaphysical loss um i read that and i liked it quite a bit um it sort of faded from my memory sort of apropos of uh, the fiction itself, um, and then I guess last year I read, um, ooh, what is it called, The Housekeeper and the something? Um, yeah. uh, that book was great, um, I, th I think I liked it even more than The Memory Police, it's about um, a woman who keeps house for this aging mathematics professor who had an accident and has some sort of, I believe, retrograde amnesia, um, meaning he can only remember about 90 minutes at a time. Um, and so every morning she has to like reintroduce herself to him. Uh, and it's a, sort of a, a nice little domestic piece about, uh, again, living with, with, with loss and specific memory loss um, and the joy of, of mathematics and um, child rearing and stuff like that. Um, less fantastical than than the memory police was, but um, um, in many ways much um, it, it, the language as in my memory is not quite as, as spare as it is in the memory police. The memory police feel is very much like a um, a book written in the midst of of loss, whereas um, the housekeeper and the professor, I think that's the title, um, uh, is much more about um, engaging with that um, fact of life. Um, and that brings us to The Diving Pool. Um, so this is three short stories about young women who, um, are, I think you could, um, you could paint with a broad brush and say that these are all stories about young women dealing with both desire and, um, sort of budding cruelty. Um, The Diving Pool is probably the most, um, that's the one that's most strictly um, abides by those that uh, sort of duality. Um, it's about a young girl um, who um, lives in an orphanage um, that her parents run and um, who has sort of a uh, a crush on one of the one of the other kids there who have been, who's been there for a long time. They've been known each other each other since they were very young and. Um, you know, like opens with a scene of her at the high school swimming pool, sort of way up in the bleachers, watching him uh, dive and, and feeling some type of way about it, uh, and then sort of meanders through bits of her life where she's like a like not. She talks about what she's not happy with in her life. She talks about sort of growing into herself, um, and mostly she talks about June how uh, and how uh, I want to say like. <laughs> elliptically she wants him but like there's a couple times when it's very very clear that this is like a, a, a sexual awakening sort of situation um the other main character in it is a sort of like toddler named rie um who's uh who brings out the cruelty in in our narrator um and it's just brutal um it, it's yeah she talks about like not knowing where this this desire for um 
for cruelty comes from, um, but she does some really fucked up things, and, and the ending is just, um, just devastating. Um, just a really, really, really well-written thing that's just like, this is, uh, this is brutal for a for a teenager, um, and um, entirely deserved in in certain ways. Um, the next one is the next novella is Pregnancy Diary. Um, this one has a little less to do with uh, sexual desire as such. Um, it's about a woman who lives with her sister and her sister's husband, who has just gotten uh, pregnant, and it sort of um, it's got a bit of a breasts and eggs kind of a vibe to it, um, if you've read the Mieko Kawakami book, um, uh, but the sort of, like, broad premise is, um, our narrator works at a supermarket, or not at a supermarket, for a supermarket chain, I believe, um, sort of Costco style, almost, it seems like she is primarily a, like, um, uh, samples vendor um, whenever she goes to work. She, like, sets up a little kiosk and, and you know, lets people try cream puffs and stuff like that. Um, and her sister has gotten pregnant, um, and she's a little baffled because she finds her sister's husband to be extremely mousy and uh, whatever, and her sister uh, does not seem to be showing, and there is, like, sort of a progression of her sister's reactions to her own pregnancy um, that, like, largely revolve around food. Um, and I guess, like, you know, spoilers for this novella. Um, just, a, just a little heads up. Um, I know I go back and forth on, on my stance on this, on this channel all the time, but it is what it is. Um, the sort of, the, 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 the cruelty and, uh, and brutal ending of this, uh, Mm, is very unlike the ending of the diving pool, and, and although it is, uh, it, it deals in the same themes. Um, after a, a long period of the narrator's sister refusing to eat basically anything, um, she becomes completely ravenous. Like her her um, morning sickness disappears overnight, and she just wants to eat everything, um, and. Uh, the narrator starts making grapefruit jam with uh, imported grapefruits, which um, she had heard at some conference somewhere could destroy chromosomes, I think is the specific thing, um, that, that there's certain pesticides, not at a conference maybe, at like a protest, there was a certain pesticide used in, in, in uh, grapefruits imported from the United States that... Um, could destroy chromosomes and so she quietly ends up just like making grapefruit jam every day and her sister like the second it has uh, reduced um, and cooled down enough she, her sister just goes to the the you know stock pot or whatever and uh, just eats the entire um pot um just straight out spoon um, it's a repeated image, um, and it, uh, since I'm spoiling, it's, uh, might as well read the last line, because it's fucked. Um, and, and I'll say, like, one of the important things here is that both, um, in both cases, the cruelty of these characters isn't, like, m like, lingered upon, they're not, like, presented as villains, um, they don't, they don't, you know, have big speeches, um, uh, sort of, like, um, uh, what was it? Was it Heaven, I think, by Kawakami that had, um, the, yeah, the, the, like, secondary bully gives that, like, long speech about, uh, his own sort of nihilism, um, and the way that, like, the reason he bullies, um, is not because, uh, he likes it or particularly wants to, but simply because he can, and by being able to, he is, um, not morally obligated because there is no morality in in, in uh, his speech, but like um, he he simply must um, because that is the world. Um, there's none of that. There's no like grandstanding. Um, it's it's simply um, I, I think an exploration of these sort of base desires as um, filtered through um, 
I mean, most obviously the, the oppression of, of, of feminine folks, uh, women, as you, as you were, um, and uh, and enacted not with malice or rage or any sort of um, intent to harm, even, but just like um, sort of like taken out on people close to them because those are the people that they can um, they can enact power over even in small ways um, but like um, yeah so the 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 specific setup for the end of the pregnancy diary is um, that the um, the sisters that used to go to this place called the M clinic when they were kids and it was like sort of their their little like secret playground um, and they would like go and look in it's a, it's a pregnancy clinic and then um, when her sister gets pregnant, she insists on going to the M clinic to have the baby. So, um, this is like her, the narrator, returning to the M clinic for the first time since she was a child. Um, uh, do, 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 do. let's see. Yeah. Following the baby's cries, I climbed the fire escape. The wooden stairs groaned under my feet. My body felt limp and warm, but the hand that gripped the railing and the ears absorbing the baby's cries were strangely cool. As the lawn receded slowly beneath me, its green became even more brilliant. The baby continued to cry. When I opened the door on the third floor, I was blinded for a moment while my eyes adjusted to the light. I stood, concentrating on the baby's cry as it swept over me in waves, until at last I could see the corridor leading away into the darkness. I set off toward the nursery to meet my sister's ruined child. Um, and those last five words specifically, just like a fucking gut punch. Um, because like I said, there's no, there, she evidences no malice throughout the rest of this story. Um, she's like sort of offhandedly mentions the grapefruit thing, um, like once or twice and is just like, oh yeah, that's, that's weird. Um, anyway, I'm just going to keep doing it. Uh, but yeah, that, that sort of matter of fact uh, use of the word ruined is, um, yeah, almost as brutal as the uh, ending of the diving pool, which I won't read. Um, and then we have the final, the final novella, which is, uh, Dormitory. Um, this one is the most fantastical of the three, um, and, um, probably, probably the least impactful. Um, it's kind of got a, I don't really... If I'm if I'm positioning these things as sort of little explorations of desire and cruelty, um, I don't know how well how well that how well dormitory fits in there. Um, at, the, at the high level, dormitory is a story about uh, another woman, um, um, sort of a, a young, um, probably like seems like mid twenties, maybe maybe to, up to early thirties uh, woman. So she seems to be. Um, maybe the oldest of the lot. Oh, no, no, she's, like, uh, I think specifically she's, like, six years out of college. So, yeah, like, late 20s, maybe. Um, and I guess I don't have a really strong sense of the age of the narrator of, uh, Pregnancy Diary. Um, but, yeah, so, definitely both older than the character in The Diving Pool, but... Um, so this woman who's about six years out of college, her husband is away in Sweden on um, uh, some sort of uh, work-related thing, and he's planning on sending for her uh, fairly shortly. Um, and she has this persistent thought, or whenever she thinks about the dormitory that she lived in when she was in college, um, she hears a specific sound, a buzzing noise. Um, Shortly after this happens, she's just like kind of like quilting at her house and, and just kind of like doing her thing. Um, a cousin of hers who she hasn't heard from in like 15 years calls and is like, hey, I'm about to go to the same college you went to. Is there any chance you know of a place I could live? And she goes, oh, yeah, um, I used to live at this dormitory. It's not technically a, 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 like a campus dorm. It's a little far away. Um but like only students ever lived there um and it's you know a, a big shared living space um 
and um, he comes by and stays with her for about a week, and they go to the dormitory where there's a manager there who um, who only has who has who's missing three limbs. Um, he has one of his legs, and he has like a um, no arms whatsoever, and a and a, um, a prosthetic leg. Um, and he, his introduction is like the, the narrator calls him and is like, Hey, is there still openings in this, in this dorm? I know we haven't, I haven't heard from you in like six or you haven't heard from me in like six years. And he's like, Oh yeah, I remember you. Uh, and he gives this like weird ominous response of just like, yes, definitely you can like, I would love to have him, but the building is decaying, um, in ways that like, I can't describe basically. And she's like, okay, well, um, I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> um, uh, and it all sort of wraps together in this way. He, the cousin comes and visits, and she's like, oh, I love this. This is great. Um, we're, like, you know, going back to school shopping together and shit like that. And um, it sort of breaks up the sort of anime of her her life, um, sort of waiting on her husband uh, to the point where, like, her husband starts writing her and is like, Hey, make sure to do these five things um, in the near future, so that you know you can come and get you can come and meet me in Sweden. And her response is just like, "The fuck is any of that? I don't. Know. This is like completely abstract to me. I'm not gonna think about it." Um, she really enjoys hanging out with her cousin. Um, uh, he ends up moving into the dormitory, and um, she starts visiting him or trying to visit him and every time he she goes there he's out somewhere and uh the manager is there and no one else is so she ends up having a bunch of conversations with the manager um and uh the buzzing noise gets resolved hey buzz buzz um yeah i, I don't I, I want i said this is the most fantastical there's nothing um explicitly um, sf null about it necessarily there's nothing that you could that isn't that is you know truly inexplicable there's no novum here um but it, it has it has a bit of a i mean like i said there's a there's a phone conversation with the you know the 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 soup that uh it involves him being like this place is decaying from the inside out in ways that we cannot explain um so there's obviously some like haunted house um adjacency here um and it turns out there's like a kid who went missing a year ago and that's why the the place is super super empty um and the manager like talks to her about that and there's like implications of some otherworldly mm, shenanigans but nothing um super concrete um a really good final image of of her crawling into a crawl space and discovering something um <laughs> in the uh, edition that i have uh, this uh, this library copy um, got a nice little uh, commentary here at the, at the like right at the end. Just somebody writing "ew," <laughs> which like it's not inaccurate. Um, but yeah, I, I guess I I hadn't really you know uh, big themes in that one. I, I don't know. I just really enjoyed reading it. Um, it I don't. I, this might be now my current favorite Yoko Ogawa book uh seems like every one I read is better than the last um that's not true they're all um they're all special little things in their own right I think she's a she's a pretty phenomenal writer um one, probably one of them that like I'm genuinely excited whenever I come across a new one of her books I think there's like one more of hers maybe two that are translated that I haven't read yet I think there's something called like Hotel Iris um Maybe next time I go to the library when I'm like returning these books, I'll um, let's see if I can pick it up and maybe have a, a new favorite Yoko Ogawa book. Um, but yeah, uh, The Diving Fool Three Novellas by Yoko Ogawa, quite good. It's quite good. Um, I forgot if I made a um, thumbnail for this already. I think I did. Uh, yeah, I think I did that sort of thing. Cool. Um, yeah. Hey. I didn't really say buzz buzz earlier. Jesus Christ. Thanks for not watching.